Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. I'm so happy to meet you again in this new project. Uh, the real difference between conventional and the critical care ultrasound guided management in case of acute respiratory failure. Let us see this patient which I recently saw in ER. A 72-year-old female patient, known case of diabetes mellitus, hypertension, ischemic heart disease, admitted to ER because of acute onset of severe shortness of breath. She was tachypneic with respiratory rate 45 per minute, auto saturation 83 on 15 liter non rebreathing mask. She was delirious, hemodynamically stable, blood pressure 140 over 80, heart rate 80 per minute sinus. She has bilateral beating edema of the lower limb and congested neck pain. Chest examination, wheezes and the crackles all over. Heart examination, it's one, it's two, abdomen, uh, soft legs. Okay. With risk factor, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, she is ischemic and acutely presented with a severe short of breath and wheezes who crackles all over. Uh, she has spitting edema of the lower limb, congestive neck vein. You uh, will think uh, by, by this clinical examination, you will think of uh, Acute cardiogenic pulmonary edema. She is ischemic heart disease. Uh, this wheezes all over. It may be acute infective exacerbation of COPD. She may have pneumonia. Okay. Uh, let us see. In the conventional way, usually you will do an X-ray chest. This is the X-ray chest of the patient. She is not well centralized. Uh, she is old mama. She has increased provascular barking, going with pulmonary edema or fibrosis. She has obesities in lower loops bilaterally. She has cardiomegaly. It's going with the, uh, what I, I, I think about, which is uh, acute cardiogenic pulmonary edema and uh, she's infection. But COBD, it's not going with COBD because the patient has uh, chest is not uh, over inflated yet and she has scar tumor. okay abg the abg of the patient bh 7.19 bcu2 79 too much bo2 almost 50 percent with saturation on monitor 81 that means the patient has severe hypoxia by carb 24 she has severe respiratory acidosis and I expect with this level of uh, CO2 retention, I will expect the bicarb to increase, even if it's acute CO2 retention. Uh, BCO2 here increased by 40 millimeter mercury above normal. That means if it's acute rise of BCO2, I expect the BCO2 uh, bicarb to increase by four above the normal to reach around 30 or 29, but the bicarb here is normal. Despite this market increase of BCO2, that means this patient has mixed metabolic and respiratory acidosis and severe hypoxemia. Also, this is going with uh, the clinical uh, diagnosis, which is going with cardiac asthma and pneumonia. Could be uh, COBD with this rise, but my carb is not too much here. ECG, T wave inverted all over chest read, one and AVL, by basic B wave in V2, denoting left atrial dilatation. It's going with cardiogenic element and chest infection. Okay. We sent uh, chemistry, all chemistry and dermatology, apart from mild increase uh, serum creatinine, 1.3, and the mild leukocytosis, uh, 12,000. With there is high probunin, high proBNB, or routine investigations came normal. Also going with congestion, cardiogenic element, going with uh, infection. ERT connects the patient to mechanical ventilator due to severe respiratory distress and the call ICU. From the clinical and the uh, routine investigation, ECG, ABG, and X-ray, really we reach to good conclusion. Fitting the bundle together, the patient has severe respiratory distress, 
هايبوكسيا سيفير ميكس بيتابوليك اند ريسبيرتو اسيدوزس مايلد رينال امبيرمنت لوبسيتوزس اند وايد سبريد ويزز اند كراكلز وباستس ايفريوير ان ذا تشيست Patient is overloaded clinically as evidenced by bilateral lower limb edema, congested neck vein, high probe in the B. It could be acute cardiac pulmonary edema, acute infection exacerbation of PCO2, or pneumonia. We started critical care ultrasound. First, inferior vena cava. As you see here, this is very important. Uh, image here video you see the blood here blood is dancing in the inferior vena cava inferior vena cava is congested and at the same time blood is dancing with with breathing is going up and down up and down that means this by by say this picture will give you the clue that there is slow flow phenomena the heart is not doing well in this patient because of this to and through movement of the blood in the inferior vena cava. It's very important science, really. Uh, we assess the distensibility index of inferior vena cava because in patient with, uh, in patient on mechanical ventilation, you are assessing the inferior vena cava distensibility, not collapsibility. Because in patient on mechanical ventilation, the inferior vena cava size and the diameter increase by inspiration. So you will assess the sensibility by a diameter on inspiration minus diameter on expiration over diameter on expiration. In this situation, it is 8.4. This in contrast to the inferior vena cava collapsibility of the spontaneous breathing patient, which uh, during this uh, spontaneous press, the inferior vena cava will decrease in diameter during inspiration, and you assess collapsibility by uh, diameter during expiration minus diameter during inspiration over diameter during expiration, which is the maximum diameter, multiplied by 100, and the cutoff point is 50%. Here, the cutoff point is 18%. Inferior vena cava distensibility, you are talking about 18%. Maximum diameter minus the minimum diameter over minimum diameter multiplied by 100. If it's above 18%, it is fluid responsiveness. If below 18%, it is non fluid responsive. Our patient is full. Second, the heart you are talking about here. This is long axis parasternal view. We are put the probe in the third or fourth intercostal space with marker towards the shoulder. You will see here right ventricle anterior septum because you are seeing here the aorta and the inferior lateral wall as you see here visual assessment is hypokinesia of the anterior septum and hypokinesia of the inferior lateral wall and some calcification here in the uh, posterior mitral leaflet and you see here this is a descending aorta and there is a hypoechoic uh, anechoic fluids here Posterior to the cervical aorta going with pleural effusion, not pericardial effusion, because if there is pericardial effusion, you will expect the high in the anechoic fluids to be in this uh, space in front of the aorta because there is a reflection of the pericardial fold here on the aorta. So if there is pericardial effusion, you will expect it to be here, not here. Here, pericardial effusion, anterior to the cervical aorta. Here is pleural effusion posterior to the cervical aorta. This is the parasternal uh, short axis view. You will see here, this is the septal wall. This is the anterior wall. This is the lateral wall. This is the inferior wall. As you see here, there's generalized hypokinesia by, this is the papillary muscles. By visual assessment, you are talking about uh, 20 to 30% ejection fraction suspicion. You see here, this is a four chamber view. And this is the chest X-ray. As you see here, chest X-ray only anteroposterior view, cardiomegaly in the anteroposterior view. But you see here the detail. There is increased size of left atrium. There is generalized hypokinesia. There is almost akinesia of the basal septum here, denoting <coughs> previous infarction, inferior infarction. There is a akinetic system and aneurysmal uh, basal septal here.
you see this two chamber view severe hypokinesia of the anterior wall and the inferior wall moreover you will see here moderate mitral regurg with this uh, aneurysmal and akinesia hyperechoic part of the basal uh, inferior septum you are talking about this may be ischemic mitral regurg due to restriction of the posterior mitral valve leaflet because of this uh, inferior infarction uh, this is called maybe ischemic mitral regurg you see here this is the this is the systole diastole during diastole here in the aorta this is a, uh, a five chamber view you see here my moderate aortic regurg we as you all of you know now in the icu once i discover left ventricular dysfunction cardiac disease i directly go to assess if there is increase left ventricular feeling pressure increase left atrial pressure or not this is very important piece of information in icu so according to the recommendation by american society of echocardiography and the european association of cardiovascular imaging if you find a patient with cardiac disease whatever left ventricular hypertrophy wall motion abnormality global hypokinesia any cardiac disease go directly by pulsed wave to the mitral valve tip of mitral valve to look for the e over a ratio if it's more than two or two that means there is increased left atrial pressure and the diastolic grade three diastolic dysfunction in this patient and in this situation this patient need to remove fluids from the body in case of respiratory failure because there is cardiac pulmonary edema there is congestion if the e over a ratio less than 0.8 and the e velocity less than or equal 50 centimeter per second that means it is normal left atrial pressure grade one that's all function and there is nothing to do about pulmonary congestion here the pulmonary congestion or the this the, the the fluid in the lung could be infection not congestion but if it's in between both you need to assess three parameters to reach for the conclusion you need to assess the e over e prime and the average value if more than 14 this is both the point in the direction of increased left atrial pressure you need to assess the tricuspid regurgitation velocity if it's more than 2.8 meter per second another point in the direction of increased left atrial pressure left atrial volume index by meter square if more than 34 milli per meter square you are going in direction of increased left atrial pressure after assessing these three parameters if two or the three of three positive, you are talking about increased left atrial pressure get it to the source function. And if it is too negative, you are going with a normal left atrial pressure. Okay. In this patient, E over A prime, it's not above two. And at the same time, E value is more than 150 centimeter per second. That means it is in the intermediate category. We need to assess E over A prime. It is 22 E over E prime, it's 22. That means it's one point in direction of increased left atrial pressure, left atrial index. While um, I am measuring the left atrial volume, I am not going here to the pulmonary vein. I am measuring only the, the, the uh, uh, margin of the left atrium. Here, left atrial index is 48 millimeter square meter, another point in the direction of increased left atrial pressure. That means this patient has grade two diastolic function with increased left atrial pressure you see here no tricuspid regurgitation at all this is negative point and in case of severe left atrial dysfunction and one of these three points is not clear you can go directly to the to assess the pulmonary venous flow as you see here this is the <coughs> right this is the right pulmonary vein and I am putting the pulsed wave doubler in the right pulmonary vein to assess the pulmonary flow. This is the systolic flow, diastolic flow, and this is the atrial kick. Systolic flow, diastolic flow, atrial kick. As you see here, systolic flow is less than diastolic flow. So, so, so this point count with increased left atrial pressure. Okay. Uh, instead of cardiomegaly in anterior chest X-ray, it's only card in chest X-ray. It's only cardiomegaly. 
you don't know what's going on. Is it pericardial effusion? Is right side dilatation? Left side dilatation? Now, patient has severe left ventricular failure with global hypokinesia, visual ejection fraction 20 to 30 percent, moderate mitral gauge, aortic gauge, grade two diastolic dysfunction with increased left atrial pressure. We are assessing a physiology here, mass physiology of the disease, because it's not only cardiomegaly. We are no, it's not only low ejection fraction, but what about the left atrial pressure? What about wedge pressure? What about congestion? And in fear of recovery, sensibility 8%, denoting that the patient is not fluid responsive and the most right and left atrial pressure are high. Because uh, in fear of cava, uh, congestion going with increased right atrial pressure, right side pressure, uh, especially in absence of tricuspid regurgitation, and uh, grade 2 does dysfunction with increased left atrial pressure, that means there is increased pressure in the uh, left side of the heart. That means this patient has increased pressure around the heart and uh, definitely is congested. Third, the chest. You see here, this is the conventional, with conventional management, this, this, this is the X-ray done on admission. And this is the basis of uh, clips of uh, uh, what's going on in the patient. As you see here, here is obesities. What is this obesity? It is atelectasis, consolidation, effusion. What's going on really in this area? You see here in the right lower loop, there is pleural effusion. This is the liver, this is the diaphragm, this is the inferior vena cava, and there is effusion here. Okay, it's very clear. We know now this. Obesities is pleural effusion. You see here, this obesities could be also consolidation, could be pleural effusion, could be atelectasis, could be collapse. What's going on here? This is a left lower loop consolidation. There is air bronchogram here. You see this bright area is air bronchogram denoting consolidation with around the pleural effusion here, going with consolidation and the pneumonia. You see here also in the, this area, lower down here, there is pleural effusion with equus inside, denoting it could be synemonic pleural effusion, equus inside. Moreover, <clears throat> as you see here, there is increased bronchovascular marking here. Is it fibrosis? Is it uh, edema? You see here in some areas there is V lines with clean pleura, denoting uh, congestion. And here is subpleural subpleural consolidation, denoting uh, dirty infection. As you see here, there is bilateral motor pleural fusion, left lower loop consolidation, and the pulmonary edema. We we confidently. Uh, DC IV fluid was started during intubation. We gave uh, furosemide and the start antibiotic after sending ETT secretion, which was yellowish and dirty. So now we uh, actually know what's going on. With conventional management, we get a lot of points, but really after critical care ultrasound, the picture is very clear. There is heart failure, there is congestion, there is increase, uh, right and left side pressures. This patient is overloaded. This patient is not only having interstitial edema, which is uh, beating edema of uh, bilateral limb. This patient has intravascular volume overload. We need to remove this volume by uh, diuretics. This patient has uh, bilateral pleural effusion. Need to be to giving to to be deloaded by uh, diuretics. And at the same time, there is signs of left lower loop pneumonia. So we, we should start uh, empirical antibiotics. Uh, and as you see here, <clears throat> the picture is very clear. I believe the difference between the conventional management and the critical care ultrasound guided management is the confidence. You, with critical care ultrasound, you will not see opacities which can uh, go in a, any direction. You will see here pleural effusion and here is consolidation and here is a pulmonary congestion so you see clear diagnosis from several perspectives so you proceed smoothly with proper management 
this is really the difference between both uh, critical and uh, guided and the conventional management. Thank you a lot for your appreciated listening. Bye bye.